I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. Hello and welcome back to all of our listeners from around the world and across the United States. We're happy to have you back with us again for more incredible stories. And if you are joining us for the first time, welcome to our show. We really hope that you enjoy it. In fact, we hope that you enjoy it so much you will hit that like and subscribe button and join us each and every Friday for new episodes. And guess what? Our gift to you is the first one is free. It's on us. So what are we, uh, we going to be talking about today? Well, this evening, uh, we have another one of those uh, little incredible history gems. Oh, so this is going to be an incredible facts. Yeah, incredible facts. Um, And uh, we're going to be talking about the world's longest border that doesn't have any forts protecting it. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. There's only one. And I'm not going to uh, say exactly where it is quite yet. Uh, we'll, We'll get into that as the story unfolds. So, are you ready? Oh, I'm always ready. Okay. It's uh, really one of the world's great miracles, in in my mind. Uh, It's uh, 2,000 miles long. It separates two of the great nations of the world, and and there isn't a single fort or navy ship or soldier protecting that border. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Uh Is it it Canada? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you, uh, such friendship between uh, two countries, friendship and trust, has only happened once in the history of the world, and the two lucky nations who uh, have proven they can live in peace with each other for a couple hundred years are the United States and, once again, Canada. Yes, it's true. From uh, the angry Atlantic to the huge Pacific, over mountains, plains, farmlands, there's not one barricade separating the two nations, if you can believe that, Gary. Well, it's because we trust each other. Yes. And uh, that's important uh, in a relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we have a long history of living in, in peace and cooperation with each other as well. Now, where else in the world could this happen between two countries? Do you have any idea? Um, I have no clue. Well, in Europe, fortresses uh, protect almost every mile between all the nervous nations, large and small, on the continent. So let's find out exactly how this miracle of nations actually came about. The main architect of this whole uh, scheme was a man by the name of Richard Rush. Oh, And I can guarantee you that um, maybe no one who's listening this evening recognizes that name, Richard Rush. I have no clue who that would be. He has been long lost in the annals of history way back in the footnote pages, if if at all. Okay. He's responsible for creating the uh, longest border in the world that doesn't have any forts. So this uh, great experiment in peace started uh, more than 200 years ago. The War of 1812 was going on between the United States and England. In fact, it was just over. It had just concluded. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was still a lot of uh, tense feeling of dislike between the two nations. Uh, Both the Americans and the English were were still angry, and and they, they did not completely trust each other. So uh, it it was obvious that many Americans eyed that 2,000-mile border between the United States and Canada with a little bit of fear uh, because Canada is part of the uh, British Commonwealth. Many Americans and and Canadians as well demanded that a wall of fortresses be built along the border. A Canadian official told Richard Rush, he was the United States Assistant Secretary of State back then, that uh, Canada was going to build a line of forts along the border And uh, the Canadian also warned Richard Rush that Canada planned to put warships on the Great Lakes. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, Richard Rush uh, calmly responded that if forts were built and manned with soldiers and if gunships sailed the Great Lakes with guns, 
sooner or later, fighting most likely would break out again. So he suggested that the border remain unprotected. Now, the Canadian uh, diplomat he was speaking to thought it was a novel idea and agreed that it might be a good thing. But, he asked Rush, would the United States agree to such a radical idea? Oh. Well, we'll see, Richard Rush said. Now, Rush ran into immediate opposition. The American Army and Navy leaders were opposed to uh, his idea. A border between two countries undefended? That's unheard of. Unbelievable. However, Rush plotted ahead with his idea, his dream. Finally, both Canada and the United States agreed to try it out. No forts, no Navy ships, no soldiers, no sailors, no guns between Canada and the United States for more than 2,000 miles. Now, skeptics waited for the worst to happen, and it didn't. The longest border in the world between two nations has remained unarmed for more than 200 years, and Gary, that is a monument to the fact that two great nations can live together in peace. The credit belongs to a long-forgotten hero of American history who our listeners are hearing about for the first time this evening, Richard Rush. Oh, wow. So uh, that is the story behind the world's longest border that doesn't have any forts. And so we always like to conclude these short little uh, weird historical facts with a few zingers. So I'm going to ask you if you know this. Who was the first Boy Scout to be elected president of the United States? Um, Would that be... Teddy Roosevelt? No, it was John F. Kennedy. Oh, so, really? So, yes, prior to 1960, no Boy Scout had ever been elected president. Now, here's one you'll probably get because it's, I'm sure, right off the top of your head. How much do the uh, fingernails on the Statue of Liberty weigh? I have no clue. <laughs> I, never once in my mind have I ever thought... <laughs> Geez, I wonder how much her yeah. fingernails weigh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know they came off of the statue. I thought they were permanently attached. Well, guess what? Uh, you know what? Somebody went to the trouble <laughs> to find out the answer to this question. Oh, really? And the fingernails on the Statue of Liberty, they weigh more than 100 pounds. Wow. What a life aspiration. <laughs> yeah. To some some kid that, sitting in his classroom. One yeah. day, I'm going to figure out how much the Statue of Liberty's nails weigh. Yeah, more likely in the bedroom in his basement mm -hmm. but um there no, are, i bet i bet whoever it was was uh their life goal was to be a manicurist yeah. and what what better hand to manicure than the nails on the uh, statue yeah. of liberty yeah um here's an interesting fact uh william howard taft he was one of our presidents he saved more than a hundred thousand dollars while he was serving his term as president of the united states so he did pretty well Hundred thousand oh, yeah. dollars back in the eighteen hundreds. Uh, wow. Oh, that went quite a ways. You know, that was a lot of a lot of cash. Some big money back mm -hmm. then. But on the other hand, at the earlier part of the century, President John Adams found the cost of being president so high that he actually considered resigning after only six months in office. Wow. He got to be president. He was there six months, and he said, this is too expensive. And he seriously considered just resigning the presidency. Wow. Our second president. So, uh, you know, that's kind of interesting in my mind. Well, let's jump to the Civil War. Civil War in uh, the mid-1800s. Uh, there was a general named Phil Kearney, and he lost his left arm while fighting in the Mexican War, which was in the 1840s, 50s. Somewhere, somewhere there, around there, yeah. yeah. But uh, it didn't stop his career. Uh, he served with the North in the Civil War, and he was in the cavalry. Oh, he would hold his saber in his one hand and he would hold the reins of his horse with, with his, his teeth. teeth. Did you hear that? For or, some or, reason, I feel like that sticks out in my mind as something I, I might have heard of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do a couple more. Um, Franklin D. Roosevelt, one of, one of my all-time favorite presidents, he was the first president to make a speech of acceptance of a nomination 
at a national political convention. So before he did that, nobody actually uh, gave their acceptance speech at the national convention. Franklin Roosevelt started that uh, tradition. Oh. And last but not least for this evening, for our incredible facts in American history, there were three presidents who had two things in common. All three were presidents of the United States, of course. Of course. And all three played the harmonica. Really? Who were they, Gary? Um, Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Abraham Lincoln was one of the presidents who played the harmonica. Okay. And then a lot of people talk about similarities between Lincoln and Kennedy. Let's say Kennedy. You're close. The president right before Kennedy, Dwight Eisenhower. Oh. All right. We have two out of the three. Abe Lincoln, Dwight Eisenhower. And I'll give you a hint. The third one was much earlier in the 20th century. He didn't speak very much. He was a very quiet individual, but he played the harmonica. Teddy Roosevelt. Calvin Coolidge. Oh. So there you are, the three presidents who played the harmonica, which is, I thought, kind of interesting. Abe Lincoln, yeah. Dwight Eisenhower, and Calvin Coolidge. So folks uh, who enjoy trivia and playing trivia games or trivia pursuit, you have been exposed this evening to some pretty good material, I think. Oh, I would think so. Yeah. I think that, that right there, again, if anybody uh, decides to go on Jeopardy or has, you know, goes to a trivia night or something like that, remember... We gave you the answers. Yes. We gave you the answers. We gave you the answers. You're welcome. Right on here on Richard and Gary's Incredible Stories podcast. You are welcome. Now, next week, please be sure to join us when we talk about the country's most fascinating genius. Oh, I can't wait. Who could that be? Who could it be? Who could that be? We'll have to wait till next Friday to find out. I guess we will. So, until next week... I'm Richard. I'm Gary. And these were some incredible facts. <laughs>